Welcome back life science learners. In our segment today, we're focusing on the revision of cellular respiration. Let's apply our understanding to various different questions. I remind you to make note of some of these important concepts. Write them down so that you can apply them when you're working through some questions. Let's get straight into the lesson and apply our understanding to various different questions. Question one, as I always do, start off with some multiple choice questions. In this segment, it's important that we try and understand some basic concepts as we unpack them using cellular respiration. So the first question, cellular respiration in a green leaf takes place, A, during the day only, continuously B, C, during the night only, and D, during photosynthesis only. Guys, as I mentioned earlier on, cellular respiration is a fundamentally important process for the production of energy. All living organisms require energy throughout their life. And we find that cellular respiration is a process that occurs continuously. And that means during the day and during the night. So this will take place continuously as we require energy consistently being produced. Let's look at the next question. The following, the following components are involved in cellular respiration. And we know that energy is the product. Carbohydrates are needed as the reactant. We know that carbon dioxide is a waste product. Water is needed as well as oxygen. So we're looking at various different components involved in this process. Let's read the question further. Which one of the following combinations show the correct way in which these components are involved. So guys, this question gives you various different components. It's important that we go back to these components and look at what is needed. So we talk about the reactants and the products. And so guys, we know that one of the products of photosynthesis of, sorry, respiration is energy. So that's going to be a product. Carbohydrates are the reactants, so we know that those are the reactants. Carbon dioxide is a product. We know that oxygen is required, so that's a reactant. And we see water as a product. So we've got, <coughs> excuse me, we've got products, which are energy and water, and we've got reactants, which are carbohydrates and your oxygen. So when we unpack this question, it's important that you look at that. So it's going to be those two reactants forming those three products. And as I mentioned, if we go back, it's two and five. So two and five, guys, let me just go back one more slide. So it's two and five, which were, as I mentioned, your reactants. So it's your carbohydrates and your oxygen, which would be on this side of the equation with the rest coming onto the left hand side. So this equation required that you understand what the reactants were and the products. So a very different way of testing a very simple concept by mixing up the combinations. So it requires that you read. Let's move on to 1.3. The conversion of pyruvic acid into lactic acid occurs during. So guys, we've looked at the process of cellular respiration, we know that during anaerobic respiration, we find that in animal cells, the pyruvic acid can be converted into lactic acid, producing some energy. Let's look at the options. So does it occur during photolysis or glycolysis or anaerobic respiration or oxidation of glucose? So guys, it's important that we know that this reaction happens during glycolysis. So when glucose is broken up, it's broken up into two pyruvic acid molecules. That is the process that occurs during glycolysis. And that gives you, in anaerobic respiration, lactic acid. So the answer there was B. A phase that does not require oxygen during cellular respiration. Guys, the various different stages that we've discussed so again, the focus is, does not require oxygen. So guys, we've looked at the Krebs cycle. We've looked at 
glycolysis as a reaction in which glucose is split up. So what would be the answer? The answer is glycolysis because that is the reaction that takes place outside in the cytoplasm independent of oxygen where at least two molecules of pyruvic acid are, are produced and ATP is produced. And we said that these were reactions that were ensuring that even in the absence of oxygen that some energy was produced. Let's move on to question two. This relates to biological terms. So we'll go through a few of these and apply our understanding. The process during which glucose is converted into pyruvic acid. I'm going to give you a moment to write your answers down. Let's go through them and as we do that, I hope that you'll be able to give me three answers in a bit. The second question is, the reagent used to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. So guys, when doing respiration experiments, we often have carbon dioxide as a waste product. What is the chemical reagent used to test for the presence of carbon dioxide? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Question 2.3. The acid that accumulates in the muscles of humans during continuous strenuous physical activity. And we refer to that as anaerobic respiration in animal cells, where in the absence of oxygen, respiration does occur, but it builds up in muscles causing stiffness. So I hope that rings a bell. Now let's reveal the, those answers. So as I mentioned, the first answer would be glycolysis, and that is when the glucose is converted into pyruvic acid. The second question was relating to what chemical is used to convert or to test for the presence of carbon dioxide, and that is clear lime water. And we know that clear lime water, when carbon dioxide is in introduced into that, turns milky. And so that could be an indicator for the presence of carbon dioxide. And finally, we looked at lactic acid being built up in the muscles during anaerobic respiration. And that is what causes the stiffness in muscles. We've got three more and we'll wrap the segment up. The gas which is essential for the Krebs cycle to occur. We know that the Krebs cycle is the second stage that we look at. I'm going to give you a moment to reflect on that. 2.5. The folded structures found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. As a quick recap, we know that there are folds on the inner membrane, so this points to those folds. And 2.6, the stage of anaerobic respiration that releases carbon dioxide. So we looked at those in a, a little while ago. Let's see what your answers were. So as I mentioned, the gas which is essential for the Krebs cycle is oxygen. And we know that oxygen is a requirement, and that is the only reaction that requires it. It's the first reaction of the Krebs cycle. The folded structures on the inner membrane of the mitochondria are called the cristae. And finally, the stage of anaerobic respiration that releases carbon dioxide is the Krebs cycle. So guys, we've spent some time unpacking some of the terms by using some questions that required us to analyze various options around the different reactions. We've also looked at some descriptions that test the understanding of the process. And these, again, are important in being able to understand and unpack the processes that we've just looked at. Let's have a little break, and when we get back, we will take this to the next level by applying this to more complex questions. See you in a bit. Let's re-energize and start again.